Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup. These are recorded live Fridays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you'd like to catch the show live, join us then for all the crazy nonsense, looking at the comments and seeing it all live as it happens. And today we are going to jump right on into our privacy. 23andMe receives FDA clearance for direct-to-consumer genetics test for prostate cancer. Researching this, I found they've actually had a few different genetics uh, tests for other cancers as well. PCR, uh, not PCR, PCA1, um, PRC1, thank you, breast cancer. Um, and two, uh, and a few other ones. And th- what I want to show you guys and, and uh, illustrate to you is the dangers of this type of stuff. That this is a for profit company that's collecting genetic material on you. And you're like, oh, yeah, test me for all this kind of stuff. And even if you're not necessarily saying, yeah, test me, they can still test it and just not tell you about the data. And being a company for profit, the question is, what is their exit strategy? The same thing that I had questioned about Fitbit a while back when Fitbit, I said, guys, Fitbit is going to sell to the highest bidder and it's going to be a health insurance company. Well, Fitbit, in case you didn't know it, sold to Google as part of their health group where they're trying to build a health insurance company. Hmm, maybe I'm prophetic. Maybe I just know how business works. But with that being said, 23andMe has several different screenings, carrier screening reports, genetic health risk, BRCA1, BRCA2, pharmacology. Uh, <clears throat> this was actually my field of research, and I'm, why am I getting it so wrong? Uh, pharmacogenetic metabolism, pharmacogenetic interpretive drug information, um, MUTH associated polypsis report, a MAP report which is a colorectal and a hereditary prostate cancer report. So they can test all these different things and collect all the data and then, you know, sell it to the health insurance company that would like to buy it because this is a for-profit company and they're not doing you any favors here. They are actually doing these things and they are a company that has some questionable practices, some questionable securities. And the fact of the matter is we need to be cautious about giving our DNA to some company like this. Uh, Signal is getting a new CEO. Moxie is officially stepping down. He is remaining on the board. It is unclear what he's going to be doing with all of his free time. Um, But uh, that is uh, a new direction. So then the question is, who are they going to replace him with? And what is the direction they are going to take? Uh, Signal is, of course, one of the best... um, and and encrypted text messaging platforms. Really, my only hang up with Signal that at one point in time they tried to do this storing some stuff in the cloud with a pin. I'm like, uh, no, that's about the time I stopped using Signal. And the only reason I haven't gone back now that all that is optional and not really push on you. The only thing that really keeps me from going back to using Signal is the one thing Signal needs to do. The one entirely stupid anti privacy thing they do is when you jump onto Signal, they will literally text. Everybody that has their phone number, like, this guy's got signal. Um, no. There might be people that have my phone number that I do not consent to having my phone number. Me changing my messaging program is nobody's business but my own. That's the one thing Signal really needs to fix for me to be excited about Signal again. And who knows? Maybe they did fix it. If they have, let me know. I'll investigate it. Overall, Signal is good if you can get over that one issue. And um, the reality is... They need to get over that issue because that is a serious, serious issue in the realm of mentally ill people running around trying to track and stalk different people. But anyway, Nordic Track will now let you yell at the smart door uh, dumbbells. Hey, Alexa, order me unicorn meat and set my dumbbell to 50 pounds. Confirm. All right. And so, yeah, Nordic Track is now has apparently have smart dumbbells where you can go in and set the weight based on some computer program. And you can now tie it to Alexa to tell Alexa how much weight you'd like to have. This is the epitome of laziness in the midst of doing weightlifting. Okay. Now, obviously, in the van, I don't have a weightlifting set, I have some flex bands with me now. But at home, I do have a nice free weight set. And it's not. I, I mean, I, I just can't imagine being in the middle of my weightlifting set. We got to move on to the next weight and having to talk to my dumbbells to get the right weight. Just move them around, you lazy bones. 
I mean, really. But you apparently now, Nordtrack is going to allow you to talk with uh, your smart dumbbells. See, this is what it is. You just set the little knob. Ooh, do, 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 do. Oh, because I'm so weak. I can't even adjust my weights properly. Um, but now that can be tied to Alexa for some reason. Hey, Alexa, order unicorn meat. Confirm. Anyway, Apple has a new onion routing system, and uh, we know that this probably works really good because half of Europe and every telecom is pissed off at Apple for it. So, hey, maybe this is something I can get behind Apple doing. Telecom companies aren't happy. They want regulators to step in. Uh, there's been some rumors. We'll actually cover it in the next article here. Um, but there's some rumors that it has been blocked by some ISPs. Um, not entirely true. But uh, basically what's happening is they're creating what is called private relay. It is baked into the operating systems as of iOS 15 and Mac OS Monterey. So it is baked into this. You can turn it on or maybe it's enabled by default and it basically functions sort of like the Tor browser. Uh, the Tor browser is still better uh, because it is completely decentralized and it goes through three nodes. This one is not totally decentralized. Everything is proxy and relayed through Apple servers, uh, but it is through two nodes and it's done in such a way that... Um, it's done in such a way that uh, uh, the websites can't see who you are or what you're doing. And all the websites are going, but but, but we won't know if they're looking at bad stuff on the Internet. Well, don't worry. It's Apple. They know if you're looking at bad stuff on the Internet. They are implementing CSAM even though they're not openly advertising it. Because they thought the whole world would be all excited about the CSAM scanning. And then they got slapped in the face by every single privacy advocate and half the rest of the world. They're like, huh, maybe people aren't all excited about us being able to scan your phones and report you to the police. Uh, but they're still doing it, by the way. They um, they're just took down the documentation. And by the way, as a little aside, um, a little parenthetical here, I was discussing this with uh, the host of the campground where I'm at right now. Uh, I was chatting with this person, and uh, we were talking about different tech and stuff. And I said, well, Apple's doing doing the CSAM scanning, or I said they're, they're planning to it. It's unclear if they fully implemented it yet, but they said they're doing this. And she's like, oh, good. They need to do it. I said, well, not so good. She's like, well, what do you mean? And I explained, well, you know, what if they just toggle the switch and say you're not allowed to have this meme? What if they simply toggle the switch and say you're not allowed to say this word? The technology's bad. All of a sudden, I see you go, Ugh. I see this this amazing, good, get those nasty people, turn into complete fear going, wait, I could be targeted by all this. I, yeah, that's the problem. And so... Um, this one here, though, back to the end parenthetical, back to the privacy relay, basically functions like Tor only through two nodes instead of three. And uh, it is an Apple node, although Apple says that the encryption is passed on in such a way that Apple cannot see what you're looking at either. So basically it's tore through a single node that Apple controls everything. So in theory, they can't see what's going on. And mostly this is part of the privacy blocking to prevent any websites from seeing what you're doing, basically fingerprinting you and all these things. So in my current understanding of this, and if I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments, but in my current understanding of this, I can kind of get behind what Apple's doing. I would still trust Tor better, but I can get behind what they're doing at least. Now, there were some allegations that T-Mobile uh, was actually blocking this feature because all the ISPs, including T-Mobile, are all mad about this thing because oh, it stops us from seeing what people are doing. Well, good. You don't need to be seeing what I'm doing anyway. Um, but it turned out it wasn't um, T-Mobile actively blocking it. It was a... A problem. It was a problem with some code somewhere that was actually preventing the feature from turning on. You'd have to toggle it off and then toggle it back on again. And that's kind of what was going on. So um, overall, um, it's not a big conspiracy theory because the ISPs are just complaining to their uh, government pets. When the government pets are not busy slapping them with sticks because of their their malfeasance then um you know they, they're they're like okay i'll you're we'll, we'll listen to you now because yeah we we know we have all these privacy rules in place but this is privacy going too far so <laughs> there's that well if you want to help support the channel we do have affiliates today i'm highlighting my book called synaptergy synaptergy.com or tlm.li forward slash s 
And uh, with Synaptergy, it is a science fiction novel. And uh, hopefully I will get into doing part two of this. But you can head on over to the website here. You can read the whole of the first chapter, see if it hooks you. Or you can, um, well, if you allow once through my your tools there, you can actually listen on SoundCloud to the first five minutes of the book as well. So you can do that. And uh, with that, guys, let's go, go ahead and have a look at our security news. First up in security, the Raspberry Pi has a new device that is using to attempt to detect malware. It utilizes electromagnetic waves rather than relying on virus scanners and software. So the idea is you can run this near the device and um, the types of frequencies it will give off with malware tends to be different than the device, uh, the uh, information it gives off otherwise. And so that's kind of the, what the approach we're doing. And uh, there's not a ton of details. TechSpot is never really all that heavy on details. Um, and there is a little bit of in other information there, a little bit beyond the scope of what I'm doing. But just be aware of it. Raspberry Pi is being used to detect malware, which is good. And I'm also glad to see Raspberry Pi article in security that was not a breach in and of itself. But, you know. Well, a teen hacker finds bugs that lets him control 25-plus Teslas remotely. <laughs> hmm. Now, he's very clear. Okay, I couldn't drive the car off, uh, you know, creating the, um, the situations you might find in the fate of the furious. Um, but I was able to get in there. He's able to get in there. He's able to crank up the volume, turn on the radio, uh, turn on self-driving. I think there's a few other things he was doing. Now he said, um, and, and I think that this is literally probably a little bit more of his pandering. This has to do more with the owners of the cars than the security of the Tesla itself. Although there was no elaboration on exactly what he means by that. What did these guys go in there and attach it to a, um, to a home router that was completely unsecure and accessible in the internet with every port open? I mean, can you define what the fault of the owners is rather than above Tesla? Because if you're able to get 25 plus Teslas across 13 different company countries and do fun things like honk the horns with it, there's something else here going on. But I couldn't find any elaboration. Uh, the coolest thing about this is this is a 19-year-old hacker. Um, his from Germany, I think. And, uh, another story had a little bit more of his backstory. So apparently, uh, he was such a child prodigy. His parents, uh, petitioned the German government to let him attend to school only two days a week. So he could spend the rest of his time learning how to hack as a 10 year old. Uh, so very cool, a very cool situation. But, uh, there we are guys. Um, apparently yes, Tesla's can be hacked. Um, he wasn't able to drive away with one, but uh, this is concerning enough. And this is why cars need to stay off the Internet. OK, there is no earthly reason you need to put a car on the Internet. Um, ADP fraudulent QR codes found on Austin public uh, meters. So basically, if you have seen the meters where you need to go in, park your car, and then you go in and you either do information, maybe you scan a code, whatever else. Well, some hackers came by and they just started taping these QR codes to the meters to be like, hey, click here. And it would go to a website that looked like the uh, the state's website that you do through the app. And then you'd give it your credit card information and then you have been pwned. <laughs> um, so the police found 29 stickers uh, down um, downtown in Austin, I believe. It's a 20. Um, yeah, 29 were fraudulent QR codes. 20 stickers have been found on the following street, West East and West 4th, East and West 5th, West 6th, West 7th, West 8th, West 9th. Uh, is it New Season San Giacchino? Um, there's 29 of these fraudulent QR codes found overall, and they're saying, hey, we don't use these QR codes. But you know, people don't know it by looking at this picture here, and uh, that's what people were doing. So, I mean, absolutely genius on behalf of the hackers. Just put a little QR code, collect some money. Hey, why not? Get some parking. Um, that would be really bad, of course. So uh, just be aware. Um, I would advise you to not use QR codes for payments unless you absolutely know what you're doing. But, of course, that's the direction everybody's trying to go in now like china everyone's like everyone in china's here here's my qr code pay me with my qr code so it makes logical sense it's a it's a good logical sense uh 
And WordPress plugin vulnerabilities more than doubled, and basically this is a new threat model for WordPress more than anything else. And of course, I'm shifting my stuff away from WordPress because they have, as an open source project, they've stopped listening to their community. They've done a whole lot of things which are highly controversial, and every single version becomes stupider and stupider and more insanely bloated than last. I had transferred a new WordPress site that I'm going to be managing onto my servers. I had to increase the memory to 128 megabytes of memory in order to run this site. If you don't know anything about managing a, a website on PHP memory, that is so insanely high, it's ludicrously ridiculous. In fact, it makes me wonder, um, should I even do this on my own server? Because that's a lot of memory. Uh, but that's what WordPress is doing. It's requiring more and more memory because they're putting all this nonsense, lazy loading garbage embedded in the core of the crap that, guys, stop using WordPress. I am shifting everything in my business that I can away from WordPress. I'm still working with it, managing, developing, and things like that because I personally have like 30 sites on top of about another 50-ish sites I work with in conjunction with another group. But I'm moving every site I can away Away from it. In fact, having a, just a look at this screenshot, this is the basic ad plugin screen. This is the Gutenberg plugin right here, the one that's kind of right next to me, right there. If you can see that, this is rated as two out of five star rating, 300,000 plus active installs, thousands of reviews, all one star reviews. This is the plugin that they have embedded into the core of WordPress that is so bad, literally everybody but maybe a good 3% of the WordPress users completely hate it. Yet they have no way of turning it off other than installing another plugin that kills it. That's how bad WordPress is being. And if that wasn't bad enough, in the latest version of WordPress, they have pushed that blocky, stupid, bleepy nonsense now onto the widget block. So now every single time I install a new WordPress website, I have to hack the theme to kill the Gutenberg crap in the widgets, and I have to install a plugin or hack the theme again to get rid of Gutenberg in the core. But eventually those won't even work because they're like, everyone's going to use Gutenberg despite nobody likes it, WordPress. Anyway, WordPress rant over. How's their security getting worse? Well, what's happening is there is a massive percent of WordPress plugins, which most of them are simple fly-by-night guys. Most of them don't track CVs, and many of them don't have enough resources to keep things secure. But then what the hackers have figured out is let's not excessively utilize the high risk breaches because really only things with a seven or above is getting fixed. So all of these vulnerabilities are hovering around the five. So they're off of anybody's radar to not be fixed. And so what's happening is, uh, no, they didn't have the, they didn't have the, um, uh, the chart on this one, but like the WordPress vulnerabilities have rose 142% from 2021 or 2020 to 2021. Um, 77 percent of all WordPress plugins are vulnerable, and many of them have uh, over about 8,000 have known public exploits. And I'm going to go ahead and defend WordPress in one point. WordPress itself is not the radically insecure part. It's when you conjuncture WordPress with plug-in after plug-in after plug-in after plug-in for nonsense stuff that any competent web developer could program into a theme in a secure manner. This is why even when I have to use WordPress with a client, we use as few plugins as conceivably possible to maintain the overall security of the site. We do not want to worry about having vulnerabilities because we're using some stupid plug-in that the functionality is easily to, to add and by adding three lines to the theme. Okay. Um, so just be aware though, if you have a WordPress website, you got to keep on these things more than ever before. Uh, and it's getting worse and worse. Well, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a subscribe star page, subscribestar.com slash switched to Linux. With that guys, thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. 
I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.